take control of the game when we were able to kind of establish ourselves defensively there, you know, kind of midway through that second half where we were able to string some stops together and build a lead. But up until then, we were comfortable kind of trading baskets for a while. And um, that, that can't be who we are. Um, that's a recipe for me for, for um, disaster. So thankful we were able to win and, and, and figure it out while there was still time. Uh, and then obviously we had some great execution. Uh, Enoch went on that little run by himself offensively, um, and we were able to kind of string some stops behind that that was able to kind of give us the lead in the game. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Coach, can you talk a little bit about your interior defense? Josh Kellen had 28 points on you guys tonight. Was it just not ready to go from the start tonight on protecting the paint? Or well, he averaged just 21, and he's had 40 twice, and he had 30 on Miami. So, you know, um, we don't want him to get 28, but you know he gets the ball every other possession at worst, and he puts a lot of pressure on you. Uh, and I thought Steph getting in foul trouble, you know, hurt our interior defense. Um, but again, we, we we held him to 66 points, which you know is where we need to be at in order to be able to win games. You know, certainly something that we need to tighten up. But uh, Josh, so far this year, has done that to virtually everybody. Um, and with his size and his touch, he's, 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 he's a lot to handle down there. So, you know, we got to continue to get better at that, uh, continue to try and improve that. Um, and we'll go back and we'll watch some film. And, you know, some of it obviously is, is not only the, the forwards that are guarding him, uh, it's also some of the activity surrounding him. And I thought at times where we were active, we made him uncomfortable. And there was times where we allowed him to be too comfortable and he was able to get into his, his moves. Do, do, when you face a guy like that, do you go into a game? Uh, what kind of game plan do you go into with a guy like him? Do you let him play his games to a certain point and just try to focus on the team in, in general, or do you, do you put a lot of emphasis on him? You know, obviously you put emphasis on him because you always put emphasis on whoever your opponent's leading scorer is, right? And, and you know, his efficiency this year, his um, – his numbers is your jump off the page, so it's hard not to put attention to him. But, you know, we've watched a number of games and we've seen teams do different stuff, whether it's, okay, we're going to play him one-on-one -on -one and we're going to try and limit everybody else's effectiveness and see if that, you know, is enough. Um, we've seen people try and send some help at times and, and see if they can disrupt him. And, and that was really kind of the way we looked at it. We, we didn't want him to be completely comfortable and just be completely on an island one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but there was times where the activity that we wanted to present him, whether it was, you know, digging down on, on the post, you know, trying to make him a little bit uncomfortable, wasn't as aggressive or as active as we needed it to be. And I think that that allowed him to get some of those opportunities. And then the hard part is when he catches it so deep, whatever you do, it takes too long to get there. So, you know, some of it's got to be making him catch it a little bit further out off the block. Once he catches it on the block, sometimes it's a little bit too hard to be able to, you know, send help or send some support to the forward that's guarding him. What did you like from Matt tonight on both ends, especially on the offensive glass? Yeah, I thought the second half was, um, you know, one of the best halves he's played here. Um, and a lot of it started down with his energy on the defensive side. You know, one of the things we did talk about was trying to get to our own offensive glass at times. And in the first half, we didn't really do a very good job of it. I think all five of Matt's offensive rebounds, I think, were in the second half. And, you know, one of the things about, you know, the, 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 our game plan was to try and get on that glass. And I didn't think guys were given the effort to get on the glass. And all of a sudden, you know, as we strung some stops together, as Matt got us some second and third opportunities, that raised the energy level for our team. And we always talk about what plays can you make aside from scoring the ball that can really impact the game. And those kind of plays that Matt made where he had those multiple offensive rebounds on the same possession, he had the offensive rebound where he got fouled, like all of a sudden like that changes the complexion of the game, that energizes your team. And there's so much value in that, it's amazing. And it energized Matt, and that then in turn energized the guys that were on the court with him, and it energizes the bench, and it energizes you know the, the crowd, right? Um, and it's just a choice that you make that you're going to give that kind of effort. And you and in and some places it might be unsung, but here we try and celebrate that stuff as much as possible. So I thought Matt um, was huge in that second half, getting on the glass, defending, getting fouled, stepping to the free throw line, knocking him down. He had the nice little cut on the baseline out of bounds, right? Because as, as much as Cohen can really hurt you on offense or on the offensive side, sometimes you know, he's not always boxing out. Sometimes he's not always alert on the defensive side. So can you steal a couple baskets back to be able to, um, 
try and take advantage of that. Trey James is in his second game so far, coming back from injury. What have you seen out of him, and what can he bring to this team uh, moving forward into conference play? Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of rust. I mean, he was out for you know extended period, and you know as much as you try and do what you can do on the side, it's never the same. Um, and I think there's going to be some ups and downs. The thing about Trey is it's 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 probably never going to be pretty. It's just not it's just not part of part of his game. Uh, but there's always going to be maximum effort, and so you know just continuing to understand. Um, you know, some areas where he's got to be able to execute a little bit better on offense as well as defense, you know, again, because he is aggressive, because he is physical, you know, how to have the game slow down for him a little bit, right? He hasn't played a lot of college basketball, right? His, his minutes at Iona were limited. Um, he did a lot of really good things in the fall for us, you know, never really got to get any game experience with us. So we're hoping slowly but surely he can kind of get some of that rust off um, and can continue to trib contribute. The thing that's great about him is he, he'll do whatever you ask him to do, right? Like if we walked in the locker room right now and said, Trey, you got to run around the building four times, he'd be like, okay, and he would go do it, right? And so like we have faith that he's going to continue to get some of that rust off because, you know, he's so willing to do whatever he can, can to help the team. Season high, 11 points for Jackson last, and he sort of struggled shooting the ball up uh, up until this game. Do you anticipate sort of a, a breakthrough offensively for him? And then what else has he provided that's allowed him to, to mainly stay on the court as a starter, even through the shooting well so far? Well, I mean, if you look at his rebounding numbers, if you look at his defensive efficiency, right, he, he's, he, his offense, his ability to help offense flow, right? Um, we obviously can play him at multiple positions. Um, that's, that's what's allowed him to stay on the court. And he's doing all the right things, right? He's, he's coming in, he's getting extra shots, he's watching film, he's, he's doing everything you need to do in order to you know, continue to make shots at a consistent basis, right? His teammates have faith in him, we have faith in him, we watch him make him in practice. But again, sometimes the game speed's a little different than practice speed. And so this is his first experience in Division One basketball. And you see a lot of times with guys um, that come maybe from the JUCO ranks, all of a sudden when January hits, things start to slow down for them, right? And I think the game has slowed down for him. Like his first couple experiences, you know, he had, you know, probably a few too many turnovers, right? He started to limit that, right? He's, he's, he's incredibly intelligent as a player. Um, and so he's, he's going to continue to make the adjustments that we need him to make, but he's in on the backboards. He helps offense flow. He's positionally perfect defensively. Um, he's willing to be physical when, when it's necessary, right? And so all those things, I think, help us just function as a team. And, and, uh, and that's aside from his you know, maturity and leadership and communication skills like throughout the course of practice games and all that stuff. Rivalries now with St. Francis, but what does it mean every year to play this game since you guys love to continue the rivalry? Because it was a pretty back and forth close game for most of it. Yeah, I mean, we, we have great respect for, for St. Francis and Rob Crimmel and what they've done there. Um, you know, we've been on both sides of this rivalry a little bit where we had a nice streak going, then they got a great streak going, and then, you know, we were able to get, you know, some important games in 2020. But, you know, we know that. Our fans are aware of, of, of the rivalry. Their fans are aware of the rivalry. Uh, it's always going to be a, a hard-fought, contested game, even as we went through handshake lines. You know, Rob said, hey, is this something we want to keep doing? Um, and I think there's a lot of it that, that makes some sense. So, you know, we'll talk about it and see if it's something we can continue as we move forward. Five different guys today scoring in double figures with so much of an emphasis from other teams on Spear and knowing the abilities that Corbin has from three. What is the importance of getting other guys going like we've seen last and Bears do tonight? You know, I think you got to you, you, the the best teams. You know, the best teams I've I've coached and been a part of here at Robert Morris have had you know multiple guys that average between eight and 13, 14 points. And the, some of those guys that have eight could go get you sixteen one night. Some of those guys that average fourteen might get ten one night. But you know, we want to play a brand of basketball where. If you if you if the game is telling you to make the player make the shot, that you take it. Obviously, we want to get you know Khalil as many deep opportunities to score. Obviously, he shot the ball well from three tonight. We want to get uh, Josh opportunities. We want to get Enoch attacking the basket. All those things are things we want to do. But our opponents are trying to take a lot of that stuff away as well. And so, if you can't figure out some other ways for guys to step in and support, then it makes it even harder, right? And um, so to see guys. Um, other guys getting in double figures. Obviously, you know Mike didn't shoot it well tonight, but we know he's a guy that can also score the ball. Uh, and so there's more like, pieces to being able to play with heavy ball movement, with good body movement, right? And trying to take advantage of maybe if teams are overhelping in a certain situation or overhelping on a certain player, 
um, that we can try to at least continue to defend, execute offensively until they maybe need to change, you know, their approach. How much do you like this non-conference schedule? I think that you had some pretty decent showings. And, yeah. Um, um, you know, I, I, the thing I think I liked about it is it, I feel like we've got we've gotten better through the non-conference. Um, we learned a lot through the non-conference. Uh, I thought we gave ourselves uh, a chance to win um, a majority of the games, uh, whether we did or we didn't. You know, you know is 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 debatable. But I thought we gave ourselves opportunities um, to learn about our team, to grow, to get better, and we got to keep doing that. Um, and so, you know, I would like to have a few more home games, but, you know, other than that, I thought it was a, 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 a schedule that was appropriate for these guys. And I think these guys a, a, approached the schedule the right way. Um, you know, you look at a couple of those games in Savannah, you'd probably like to have a few possessions back in those. But, you know, when, when you look at the way that the schedule started with Ohio State, two non ones, and, and Dayton, we hadn't really been in. I mean, Dayton was a close game, you know, under the last four minutes three, four possession game, but we really hadn't been in games with people that looked like us. And so, you know, you go and you play Mercer, you go play Evansville, and, you know, they're matched up physically similar to you, size-wise similar to you, right? And I, I don't know if we were ready to win those games yet because we weren't fully understanding the level of execution that was necessary. And um, I think from that point moving forward, we really started to understand the importance of possessions, the importance of execution, um, you know, how we needed to compete on the defensive side. And you can see other than the South Alabama game, our defensive numbers uh, have been uh, pretty strong. Yeah, the moving forward, you guys got a little bit of a break before conference play kicks back off again. What are you looking forward to improving upon heading into you know, a tough start to the conference play once again? Yeah, everything. Um, continuing to just you know, strengthen our ability to execute our formula. You know, these, you know, whether it's Purdue Fort Wayne, whether it's Cleveland State, you know, they're going to be hard games and they're going to be one or two possession games. And that possession might be at the 14 minute mark of the first half or the six minute mark of the second half or the last six seconds of the game. And we've got to get as many guys as we can engaged and alert, uh, ready to contribute. And I think that that's a challenge. Um, but I think this group of guys is, you know, hopefully up for that challenge. And, um, you know, as we come back to practice next week, We'll continue to talk about the same things we talked about all year long, executing our defensive formula, executing our offense, taking care of the details, uh, making sure that we're getting good shots, taking good shots, making sure we're rebounding the basketball. Because again, as we talked about in the beginning, that's our path forward. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a great Christmas. Enjoy. Stay safe.